Okay, so today's video we're going to look at the motorized power hammer. I got this new hammer, I want to turn it into a cross beam, and it's basically inch and a quarter stock, and I want to put it under a bit more kind of, of a, a vigorous test. And also one quick thing, this, this is the only thing I'm not happy about is this wheel is pretty wonky because I took a, an old wheel barrel wheel which was a bit battered up as well, and then I took the back wheel and we shaped it and stuck it on there. So it is wonky, but it won't come off, uh, that's for sure, and the, the pulley, the V-belt won't come off either. Anyway, let's get started, put it in the fire, and see what it can do. Ah, oh, this charcoal is really sticky, you know? At least at the beginning. It lasts a long time though, hardwood charcoal, really great way to go. So I took it from square down to round in no time whatsoever. It's a bit thick, I think, for it, because it's kind of a little bit juttery, if you know what I mean. It'll, uh, it'll whack for about five hits, and then it kind of gives me two hits and then five again. But that could also be to do with the, the pressure I'm putting on the pedal. So let's just put that back in the fire and do our second heat. I have to turn this motor off, otherwise I don't get enough airflow. There we go. Excellent. Wow, I'm really surprised with it, to be honest. shape that I can now angle grind away. Got a bit of fish mouthing going on there, but that's to be expected. Very happy with it. Might have to still tweak it a little bit, but other than that, pretty good going. Now, and that's about two and a half hours later, and there we have the hammer already made. So just quickly what I did is, I created a double peen peen because something I always wondered about, can you actually draw out more material if you have a double peen, maybe even five of them versus just one single one. And we'll test that in the next video just to see if it works or not. Uh, because what you do is normally when you, as you probably know, you, you peen down, it squishes material that way, then you flat it and that draws out then the material really nicely for you. Uh, but surely having two of them or even like if you're doing ladder pattern Damascus, this shape should be okay. And I can make many of these. I want to make 
punches, fullers, anything you name, drifts, all that from just these little guys. Um, just so quick with the power hammer as you saw. So, uh, quenched it in, in water in the end, tried oil, didn't work then, normalized it again three times, quenched it in the water and then I tempered it to a purple by putting a drift in there, sticking it in the fire and then bringing it up to a purple for about 15 minutes so that it's nice and uh, tough so it's not brittle anymore. And that's basically it. So that's it, let's take a look at a few components of the, just show you the bicycle power hammer, how it works and what I kind of had to do to make it work. By the way, go for a motorcycle and I'll explain that a little bit more in, in a minute why. Okay, so really quickly I'm going to run through everything. I'm not going to cover much. Um, I'll give you a few tips and tricks and stuff that I had to do. Uh, first thing I'm going to start with is stability. Do not use a bicycle for this job. Even though what you have here, like this, this back axle you have in a motorcycle, the front you have in a motorcycle, the chain, everything, you just need to put a 15 inch pulley on your motorcycle and you're pretty much away to go. Like I, I built this, the initial one in four hours and then I had to, because at the time I didn't have a welder, then I had to make it really stable but a motorcycle is really stable as it is. But the concept is a good idea. The Using this bicycle was in hindsight not a good idea but that's what I had. So that's what I used. It was also a fortunately cast iron and what, what I did to get around that is first of all you can weld to cast iron and I, they, these two points are the only two points where I actually, I don't know if you can see that and I'm going to get some lighting soon. These two points is what I welded and the way I did it is I run a bead along the cast iron and then I welded the pipe to that bead and that made it strong enough. So wherever I needed to weld I made a bead first on the cast iron and then I welded it. I didn't preheat or anything like that but I went really slowly and did the kind of a cold weld on cast iron. Uh, if that makes sense. Because a lot of carbon in it. So what I did then is I clamped in this bar. Can you see this bar running? It's running all the way through here like that and then it's coming along here and then back here. And when I actually clamped it back here together, you see that? And stuck and welded a piece of metal on there, that basically held the whole thing in place. And then I welded everything else to it. Here we have a clamping effect as well. That I actually bolted onto the back. And then I ran another pipe down here as well. And I just welded these onto that as well, just to make it a little bit stronger. So that sorted out the back. So it's not shaking anymore. In fact, the whole thing, I can't move it. Like the same with the front. It's pretty stuck now. And then I did the same here. Two uprights here onto that bar and then here as well. And used a lot of clamping action just to stabilize it. So yeah, motorcycle is the way to go. Um, that brings us on to the motor. It's a, it's a two horsepower motor, electric motor. You can use smaller DC motors, but then you have, you, you know, you have a chance of electro electrocuting yourself. Um, what you need with a with the horsepower is that you need for every oh, what is it, about twenty pounds of weight you have to lift for your hammer. You need about one horsepower because you're going to lose some in the, especially you have a lot of elaborate kind of gearing you're going to lose some in the friction. So 1440 revolutions, uh, one and a half inch pulley on there and that works out, I did the calculations at about seven wax per second and I wanted between five and seven so I'm pretty happy with that. The way you can work, the simplest way to work it out is it's all about circumference. So the circumference of this where it's actually touching on this circle, well it's actually up here in the V-belt, but I won't go into that. Um, so the circumference of this pulley, when you when you actually uh, fold it all out, it has a certain length. And the same with the circumference of this pulley, which is 15 inches in diameter, I can never say that word. And basically, you work out the, the length of this pulley, and then you 
work out the length of this pulley and then you divide it but anyway I won't go into it there's ways of actually doing it but the simplest way of doing it is actually if you have a one inch pulley here and you have a 15 inch pulley there that means this is going to turn 15 times um, slower than that one so for every uh, no hang on a minute for every uh, 15 turns sorry for every 15 turns that's going to turn once okay so dividing that 15 by the, the, the actual um, the RPM which is 1440 per minute revolutions that means that one will turn about oh I don't know something around 100 100 and something um, and then that's how you can work out how you know you have to work out all the different gears and then figure out how many times it whacks it's a little bit more complicated actually so that's that um, I wanted to make this short, but I'm really sorry, but I, there's a few things more that I wanted to show you as well. This slip belt clutch is basically, the way it works is, when I step on this pedal, whoops, as you can see here, it tightens it up there in the back, and then it tightens it nicely. And then when I let go, it lets go, and it slips then in this groove, which I got a lathe, a guy with a lathe, to basically take out there was a, this was a V belt pulley which has these V grooves in it so I basically uh, watched a video by Big Dog Forge a uh, blacksmith on YouTube and he basically that's what he did in order to get a slip on this and so I just went ahead and did the same thing um, so when it's loose this can turn at 1440 revolutions per minute and not grip on it and then what you want to do is you want to put that pulley which is loose it is it's I mean it's stuck on there but it spins freely you want that to be at the untight end that's what I found out if you put it on this end it's just gonna get in the way you can actually put it also in the inside and press it out that way but you may get less grippage than if you were to put it on the other side I just worked out by pressing down here that it actually just pressed against it. Um, best place to put it, this this pulley here is up here. Or if your belt is nice and tight already and it slips really well, you can put it down here as well. Just being careful that it doesn't come together and touch. And that's basically how you make this uh, V-belt pulley slip. So when it's working, it won't catch and then it engages when you press the pedal so what else is there? last component the cam I actually talked about in another video check out that video if you're interested in how I made that uh, what I did here is I've got a leaf spring from a, a small car it's probably a rickshaw one I bought that and I built this little box here which I welded on and it allowed me, I had some uh, bolts kind of welded inside and going through and then I have two holes and it's a bit dark but two holes that are holding the back of the leaf spring here then clamped it down here as well and then I found it was actually at that speed it was basically a bit floppy so it was going up and down but every time the cam was going up the hammer wanted to go down if that makes any sense and that was kind of making it very juttery and so what I did is I also welded a box on here and then welded this whole contraption on there to really make it solid and the spring is actually freely running through there was a box section here I welded it onto another box and then just welded it all together so this is loose but it's strong enough also here then these bars these are guide uh, bars that actually touch the leaf spring itself with some grease on it so the leaf spring acts as a, a preventative method for the hammer to slide left and right as well so a bit of work I mean there was a bit of work involved and a motorcycle would have made that way easier oh one last thing as well just really quickly the anvil of course I bolted that down to the floor as well the floor here is very soft even though I bolted it down in lots of places, same with the power hammer, I had to put some more weight around the anvil itself. Also welded it on there. I don't know if you can see that there. You know, that's running all the way through here. 
and then what I did is I welded this anvil stand to the bottom of the power hammer stand and that stops it then from lifting up. The power hammer itself cannot lift up because every time it whacks down it wants to lift up here but because it's now welded to that it can't lift up as well. And then I put a couple of bricks on the back and that weighs about 30 kilos anyway. So, so it's really not going anywhere. It's like, it's like really, like really solid. So I'm happy with that. So that's the work I had to do. Uh, concludes the video. Whew. I hope that explanation kind of made a little bit of sense. I really got to get lighting in here because even though it's bright outside, it gets dark in here really fast. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. That was my build. Gonna use it a lot in the future because I have a few herniated discs. And when you're getting older, you, you know, you've done a lot of work, you damage your back, and you know, you now I have to really be careful and maybe like there's a good chance it can get better but i have to be very careful so that's why i built the power hammer to help me not do so much physical work and i can do lighter hammering stuff at the anvil so yeah i uh, hope you enjoyed it do like it up it really helps uh, rank the video as well and plus it just tells me what you thought of the, the video or tell me as well so thanks for watching and yeah i might catch you in the next one